All right, so in this video, we're gonna address the idea of identifying whether or not a single replacement reaction will happen or not. And we have to answer the question, is there a strong enough reducing agent or we can look at it also is there a strong enough oxidizing agent we have to identify is what we're mixing together something that is strong enough to cause oxidation or strong enough to cause reduction so we're going to look at a couple examples so let's say for example we have solid chromium and to that we're going to put that chromium maybe into a solution containing something like copper okay so maybe we add to that copper nitrate, okay? Well again, remember we're dealing with redox reactions, we only care about what's reacting and our nitrate is gonna be a spectator ion here. So this would be like copper plus, or excuse me, chromium plus aqueous copper two plus. Now as we look at this, we think, well what is the possible reaction that could occur? Well, we wouldn't think about chromium being reduced here because we'd add electrons to it and it would become a negatively charged ion. We know metals don't want to be negatively charged ions. So all we can think about this is doing is losing electrons. So if it loses electrons, chromium would be chromium three plus. And then if this loses electrons, copper would gain electrons and we would get copper solid. So in order for us to identify, is this reaction going to happen? We need to think, is chromium a strong enough reducing agent to reduce copper, or is copper a strong enough oxidizing agent to oxidize our chromium? Well, in order for us to do that, we go back and we will look at uh, that standard reduction table that tells us at the top the strongest reduction reactions, at the bottom the, str the strongest oxidation reactions. And what we would notice is that <coughs> chromium, since it's lower on the table, wants to be oxidized more than copper does. So if we bring these two things in contact with each other, the only spontaneous reaction that would happen would be chromium being oxidized and copper being reduced. Because copper is higher up on the table, meaning it wants to be reduced, it wants to gain electrons. So if copper wants to gain electrons more than chromium does, it's gonna gain electrons when they come in contact with each other. So we would see that this reaction is going to be spontaneous and that is because chromium wants to be oxidized more than so copper does. Copper doesn't want to be oxidized. Copper wants to gain electrons. It wants to be neutral copper and we know that based upon that activity series table that tells us at the lowest are the things that want to be oxidized at the top are the things or compounds that want to be reduced. So that we can we would notice that with chromium and copper here. Now instead of chromium, all right, well instead of copper, what if we had chromium and we had something like maybe zinc two plus? Okay, so we would compare these two things together. Well again, the only possibility would be chromium being oxidized, because we're not gonna form a negative ion with that, and then zinc being reduced to give us solid zinc. So then when we look, we need to identify, is chromium something that would want that could reduce zinc? It, does it want to lose electrons more than zinc does? Well, we would go to that standard reduction table or that activity series table, and we would notice that chromium is actually above zinc in that table. Well, if chromium is above zinc in that table, that means that chromium, in this case, wants to be reduced more than zinc does. So if we put these things in contact with it, that would mean chromium is not strong enough as a reducing agent to cause reduction in zinc. We could also look at it the other way. Zinc is not strong enough of an oxidizing agent to cause chromium to be oxidized. Because we can also say that our chromium wants to, in this case, gain electrons more than zinc does. So if something, really, if something wants to gain electrons more, it's not willing to give them up. 
So chromium wouldn't give its electrons up and give it to zinc. And so we would see, okay, here we would get no reaction. And that's because chromium is not a strong enough reducing agent to cause reduction in zinc. Or, looking at it the other way, zinc is not a strong enough oxidizing agent to cause chromium to be oxidized. So we see in order for us to identify if a reaction happens, we look at that activity series table or the standard reduction table. It tells us what wants to be reduced more, what wants to be oxidized more, and if we have the correct combination like this, we would say, yeah, chromium would want to be reduced, copper, or, excuse me, chromium would want to be oxidized, and copper would want to be reduced here. Okay. <clears throat> well, then once we've done this, right, the last step is we want to actually go ahead and balance that. So hopefully we've had a chance to work through that. Well, I wanted to answer the question is whether or not we would get a reaction or whether uh, we would not get a reaction. And it all has to do with whether something has a stronger pole, wants to gain electrons more than something else does. So hopefully this helps clarify that a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and talk about this in more detail in class. I'll see you then.